twice. We're on to the next screen. All right. So, as I mentioned earlier, uh, one of the uh, members of the group sent me an email with an article uh, that ended up pointing me to an academic paper uh, that talks about uh, effectively what I consider one of the simplest and probably one of the more powerful screens I've seen. It's very interesting. Uh, I've read the 76 paper, page paper twice uh, and I think I understand it. I still have a bit more to know. Uh, there's, I've provided a couple of links here. Again, all, all these papers are at Dropbox already. Uh, this is the paper itself. Uh, this was a paper presented to the National Bureau of Economic Research, okay, by a professor. Uh, and that's the paper. There's a Seeking Alpha article, and that's the article David pointed me to. Uh, and the Seeking Alpha article basically uh, runs and screens. And then there's uh, a, an analysis of this at CXO Advisory uh, uh, in terms of uh, a quick review of the paper. So, general comment. This screen is very simple. You take gross profits over the last 12 months and you divide by total assets over the last 12 months. That's it. Nothing else. No price, no momentum, nothing. That's it. <laughs> okay. Like I said, this is a very simple screen. Uh, the claim of the paper that it works better on large cap and small cap size. The claim is that it works better if you rebalance more often, i.e. monthly rebalancing and selection should do better than annual. Uh, there's a more complex version of this screen uh, that brings in a book to market factor. We'll cover that next week. The paper specifically says you should remove financial sector stocks. The reason for that is financial industry, um, industries and corporations, the way they do their books is not like the rest of the world. That's why we have 2008, 2009. No, uh, uh, they handle things differently. I made an oopsie. I didn't do that. Okay, so financials are still left in all the sectors and in the S and P 500. Uh, my comment: This screen seems to want to have lots and lots of stocks in it. Okay, it it. My gut feel, this is just gut, not, not a lot of evidence for this, is it does better on indices and sectors that have hundreds of stocks versus tens of stocks. One exception to that is the cubes. We'll be looking at the cubes. Uh, but that's sort of a self-selected large cap universe in and of itself. Okay. Uh, one item, and this is hidden inside the paper, one of the reasons this stock works and uh, this screen works and he avoids small caps is he's basically assuming that you've got an ongoing functional business okay and so if you think about the lower end of the Russell 2000 we got a bunch of very small companies and so on that might not exist in a year or two uh, this screen might not do too well there okay he's a, basically there's an underlying assumption that it's an ongoing uh, business. Okay. It's not very well stated, but it, it's in there. Uh, and again, I will repeat, okay, for the last several months we've been doing momentum with various flavors, right? There's no momentum and there's not a bit of pricing in here. Okay. Meaning you can care less whether Apple is selling at 800 or 400. Pick your favorite stock, you know, the complete range for the year, this screen does not care about. Okay. No price information at all. That's very unusual. All right, so now that I've warned you, okay, here we go. What did I do? I took a look at the following indices, uh, 500, 400, and 600, 
shouldn't work too well down here uh, for, the, uh, for the paper. ADRs, there are relatively few ADRs back in 99, like 140 or so. The cubes are 100. All of the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ composite. And then what the hell, since I've already done the sectors, let's do them again just for the heck of it, right? Uh, in general, you'll see this uh, in, in uh, some screens. I took the larger cap part of the index because that's what the paper said it was good on. So for the S&P 500, I took all 500 stocks. For the mid cap 400, I said, give me the top 200. Give me the top half. For the S&P 600, I said, give me the top half. Give me 300. Uh, and that was based on the fact that, and in fact, the paper is very proud of the fact that this works well on the S&P 500. The whole screen was aimed at S&P 500 large cap stocks. And one of the points in the paper is, what's all this mid market, efficient market bullshit? Okay, I can, I can come up with a, you know, two, a, a screen with two factors in it that trounces the S&P 500. Uh, rebalanced annually was my base case, and then I did quarterly in every four weeks. Uh, I'll give you a look ahead on this. What's the time annual one? Now, it's interesting because John's study over there, which I didn't know he was working on, annual one. Uh, I also ran all the stocks in the index and the sector, uh, rebalanced annually, again as a benchmark, right? Same thing I did before. And in a few cases, I did the random 25 stock uh, thing. I would have done it uh, for all of this, but I just flat out ran out of time. Okay, any questions on what I did? Yes, sir? Are you picking the random stocks again? Uh, the random stocks, in this case, what I did, uh, let's suppose we were looking at the S&P 500, because you're going to see it in a second. I, uh, what I did is I randomly picked 25 stocks out of the S&P 500, uh, that, and I equal weighted them. And that's my portfolio. Ran it for a year. I then yeah, sold. How do you do the random pick? Uh, the random. It's there? a very it's a very complex uh, command. It's called random. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically it assigns a random. Trying not trying to be a smart ass here. I mean, all, all it does is it select it provides a random number for you and then I sort it on a random number. Okay, that's basically how I did it. And I do that every year. I rotate it annually. So when the screen, at the end of every year, when the screen conceptually sells all the stocks and buys another 25, I sell all the stocks and I buy a new set of 25 random stocks. And I do that and I get 40, I get a 14 year equity curve. And I do that 30 times. And then you can get some, you can draw some statistics with that. So where is this ratio with all the your distribution of random numbers? You said you're picking a random number and you're sorting on that, so it's a random number between zero and one. Yep. Is your ratio between zero and one? Ah. Uh, as a matter of fact, no. The, meaning the, uh, the, the ratio, meaning the gross profit. Uh, oh, this GP, uh, yeah, no, it's not. It can be anywhere, conceptually, it can be from zero to you know, a large number, like 10. Okay, but this, all I'm doing effectively is the random, it's a, it's a uniform random number generator between zero and one, and that becomes what I sort on. All your real ratios are over here, and all your zero to ones are over here. You're not actually. I'm not mixing them up at all. No. Okay, so over here in the random world, I just randomly pick 25 stocks, and I every year, and I you know create a 14 year equity curve. And I do that 30 times. Okay, and then I do the statistic thing. Over here, I actually run my screen. Nothing random in that screen. So that's that's literally what I did. Isn't John asking? Don't you have to multiply the random number? No, no, it's two. By scale? No. He's comparing the random results versus screen result. Yep. 
Yeah. So, because he has no benchmark, so he's generating a benchmark with a, ran with a random generator. Yeah, you can pick a different. These are I'm separate. I'm One is uh, like reference populations. Uh, no, it's the same population. It's just a way to generate a benchmark for uh, the uh, screen criteria. That's all. It's separate. Yeah. Well, it's not quite. Let's say what's the distribution variable? Every, every, every stock effectively gets assigned a number between zero and one. Okay, and then you rank all. all for example, on S and P five hundred, you rank right. the S and P five hundred. That's yeah. that's, wow. that's how it works. Okay. Now, in a second, you will see this. The screen commands. You actually go have to go in and read half a dozen things to figure out what they really do. But that's what they did. So it could be. Yeah, it could be 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.0, zero point, point zero 0.56. I mean, it's just and some number. I think the top 25, the just score. it's yeah. the equivalent, it should be, famous last words, the equivalent of flipping a coin. All right. Other questions? Yes, sir. Based on your one bullet there, where you take the top part, you pick from the 250 of the S&P, in the S and really 500. Yeah, in the S&P 500, because the paper was written specifically for the S&P 500, and it's viewed as you know the large cap index, and it's really not. Okay, I mean you can get some pretty small cap stocks in there. Uh, I I kept it with the 500 because that's the way the paper did it. Now when you get to like the Nasdaq with 2,300 stocks. And lots of them don't even meet the liquidity tests and so on. You, you, you know, I tried to bias it toward the higher market caps. And again, that's based on the paper. Okay. All right. Other questions. Okay. Next up. So here, uh, here's how I generated all the stocks in the S and P 500. I did no ranking, and you put zero here, and you get all 500. And here is the two screens. Here's, here's the screen I used. The first one is million bucks liquidity per day. And again, that's just a liquidity constraint. Notice the red, okay? Gross profit divided by total assets, okay? And to get the top 25, I take the fifth, 95th percentile. But it's turned off right now because it's red. So I'm going to get all 500 stocks. Okay, in fact, that's what that says. I got all 500 stocks. Um, in this case, it's September 28, 13. So that's the all stocks case. Very similar to what John showed. Here's one year rebalance. Blue is S&P 500. The number over here is 500, so you can see I'd always pick 500 stocks. Red is the resulting equity curve. So again, very similar to what John showed you for sectors. You take all 500 and just rebalance, and you go over for a year, you do an equal way, you go from 1.6 to a little over 8%. If you're really interested in doing this, go by RSP, which is the uh, S&P 500 equal weighted. Okay. That's, you'll get something that looks a lot like that curve. All right. Top 25. Okay. I asked it for 25 stocks. It's exactly the same screen. I just turn it on. That, that dot's green. So at this point, this is, I'm ranking all the stocks by gross profit divided by total assets. And I'm asking for the 95th percentile, so it goes from high to low. Okay. There you go. It's the total, that's, that's it, that's the whole screen. It's effectively a sort on gross profit divided by total assets. What's that look like? Again, you can see if you're all speaking 25 stocks, SPs down here, you're at 12.7%. 
So one of the takeaways from tonight is you know, your favorite stock screener, be that Stock Investor Pro, be that some of the free tools that you can get in brokerage houses, et cetera, et cetera. You know, the, if you want to make uh, you know, some fair money, you just go on by the top 25 by that ratio and you're on. Okay. You know, uh, both, both for my presentation and yours, one thing you have to be careful about is when you start here in 2000, it's easy to look like a generation. Sure. And you start back in 80 or 90, you know, you don't, you don't do so well. So, you know, it's, it, is, it is a little slippery to start yep. there. Understood. It's, it's easy so, to do. Yep. I, I hear you. Now, I will refer to the paper that started sometime in the 60s. Okay. He was claiming an alpha of, just using this simple sort, of 0.7% a month. 0.7% a month, that's 8%, 8.5% a year, yeah. okay. alpha. Okay, so that was, was what his paper did. So in case you haven't figured it out after a year and a half or so on, I love reading al academic papers that say that they can outproduce alpha and then if I can kind of repeat what they do, I feel really good because they've got better databases and they've got this wonderful thing called grad students that can uh, work on uh, this kind of stuff. And so uh, I'm very happy to see this. Yes, sir. There's uh, <coughs> just one problem. Um, the screen goes over all 500 uh, S&P stocks. It does not divide into sectors. That's correct. Therefore, and because you sort by selling criteria, which is uh, asset, and you even you didn't take the financials out of it, the result of the screen by nature is concentrated on on uh, firms with very narrow asset base because the divisor is uh, is the smallest. Yep. So I don't know if this is in reality. If you look at names, this would be a screen that you really want to invest in because it will have like a bunch of stuff that would be highly pressured. Yep. There's the bunch of stuff. There's the 25 names. Oh, at least the times. There's no okay, way. as of uh, September 28th, so it's a couple of days old. 